I've had a lot of requests on how to design a character from scratch and in Photoshop and then bring it into After Effects. I wanted to touch briefly on a process that I use to create characters from scratch using Photoshop brushes. It's a technique I use to try to move really quickly so I can get a lot of designs done. So this is one method I use that has had some measured success in the past and it may be something that might be of some use to you. I'm not an expert at this by any means. There, there are some much better tutorials on how to do this, but I thought I'd touch on it anyways. So I have a bunch of ink patterns that I've done um, using actual ink and blown these patterns that are just sort of random. And I sometimes use them to create brushes or elements that I can use to design character silhouettes. So I just want to show you the process of doing this. So I've scanned it in, so it's quite large. I don't really want something quite so big. So I'm just going to grab a square section of it. Okay, and crop that out and create a new one. I'm just trying to find an interesting spot that I can work with. And I just want to turn this into a, t a brush. So I'm just going to create a white layer here. And I'm just going to create a layer here and grab a white color. There we go. And I can just sort of paint over this to get rid of the edges. Uh, just to soften out the edges initially, because I want the, if, if I do hit an edge, I want it to be soft. And then my next thing is I'm going to grab another kind of brush. I guess I could make it really quickly just so we actually experience the process of making a brush here. It's reduced the spacing. I'm going to have wet edges on that. And I want it to um, I want it to actually undulate quite a bit. So I'm going to put a huge roundness jitter on this and an angle jitter. There we go. And minimum dynamiter, diameter, put that up. Minimum roundness, put that down. And I think the transfer I will I will include. So transfer opacity jitter. No, not going to do that. And I think what I'll do also is take the brush tip shape and reduce the hardness just a bit. There we go. So I'm starting to get a more interesting soft brush here. Shape dynamics. I'll do a flip X and Y. Not that it's actually it doesn't quite matter. Let's go into shape again and modify this shape a little bit to get something a little more interesting. There we go. And there we are. Okay, so let's try that. And maybe I'll actually go into the brush tip shape and increase the spacing a little bit more. Now this might give me a more interesting edge to cut away from. That's a little bit more organic. Okay, here we go. So what I'm trying to get is an interesting shape out of this because if the shape is just round, I'm not going to necessarily get something that's going to lend to making good silhouettes. You want something that is a bit of an unconventional shape that might lead to other kinds of shapes. I, I like to use this kind of a method because I'm a little bit tired of what my brain automatically wants to do, which tends to follow tropes or, or design cliches. It can't even be helped just because of what I've experienced and looking at. And what this does is this creates a challenge for my brain to try to fill in the holes. And now this is way too big for me. I'm going to put it down to 500 by 500. It's sort of an interesting shape. I could probably cut into it a little more somewhere. I'm just trying to look what I, what I could do to this guy to make it. It also depends on the type of character. Like if you're imagining a really muscular character, you'd probably want rounder shapes. Um, but for this guy, I don't really have anything planned. So I have all this set up. So I'll go edit, define brush preset. And I'll call this like ink blot even though it'll change. So let's go back into this composition. Actually, I'll close this and we'll create a new composition. 2000 by 2000. There we go. And just select the black color. There we go. So as you can see, not very inspiring at the moment, but let's go in and adjust some of these settings. Now what's cool is it actually assumes your last settings, which can, can be really beneficial. Already, there is some interesting stuff going on here. I think this may be a bit large, and I'm actually seeing that I'm getting some squares. See those squares? You may not be able to see them in this, but if I get really close, maybe you will. There's squares happening here. It's because I haven't cleared the edge properly in the actual file, the brush file. So let's go over to the brush file again, and I'm going to get my eraser and set it to zero opacity. Now what I want to do is I want to make sure that there is no transfer dynamics because if there is it won't be 100% opaque around the edges. I'm going to increase the size of this. Oops. Let me actually let's do 
Okay, we should be doing a brush here. Sorry, my mistake. Grab that again. Reduce the size. There we go. And again, I want to make sure there's no transfer. There isn't. So this should be perfectly white. We're hoping it's perfectly white. Okay, so flow, everything is at 100%. Now, this should clear that edging problem that was showing up in the actual brush. All right, there we go. So let's try this again. Edit. Actually, first we'll delete the existing brush. So I have all these rotten brushes I want to delete. Delete. Okay. Scroll down. You can also do this in the preset manager. I don't really need that brush either. Okay. Scroll down. Delete. Okay. So, okay, I've gotten rid of those brushes. So let's do this again. Edit. Define brush preset. There we go. I've got this brush now again, and hopefully it's a little better. So let's just swap that out. Okay, I'm not getting any square edges on that. That's good. Uh, whoops. Flip that color. Control A X. There we go. So we're back to white again. Uh, don't don't uh, don't resist actually. Actually, sometimes working in black. I find sometimes working in black is more exciting. And I can get more interesting results because I'm not thinking of positive space. I start thinking of negative space. Uh, so, all right, let's just adjust this brush really quick before we get into that. So transfer, I want to transfer on that. Uh, do I want opacity jitter? Maybe a little bit. Flow jitter? Don't know. Uh, we'll put that, uh, make sure that's to pen pressure. You obviously have these other variables, but I usually just use pen pressure. Um, maybe one day I'll use others. So let's get into the shape dynamics. Size jitter, put a bit of a size jitter on there. I do want this thing to be as, as random as possible. So angle jitter is fine all the way up. Flip X flips Y, that's fine. Now roundness, I don't want to jitter so much. Oh, maybe I do, but I don't want it to get to the point where it's a skinny little odd shaped thing. So let's see what we get here. Okay. Now, if I'm going to try to find a silhouette out of this guy, I can't just use the brush itself. Like there's, there's got to be, there's a couple things I'm going to have to do. So I have this brush. I'm going to make this brush ridiculously large to start with. Okay. And then I'm going to flip that color to black. I'm going to just start making things here and see what comes to bear. Okay. So I'm trying to find some kind of interesting shape out of this that I can make. Like there is a sense of it in your mind. So if you're looking for something that's slightly humanoid, I'm going to swap between white and black. I'm going to adjust my size uh, to be appropriate. So if, I'm, if I want some sort of a head region, um, oops, that's too large. If I want kind of a head region, I'm going to create like a light area on the head. Maybe there's sort of a, an arm or something or a torso section I need that's too much. So I'm going to reduce the opacity down. I'm going to just keep trying things and undoing them. It can be a really weird way to work, but... It actually can also be very interesting. So I'll just keep doing this. You can use all sorts of different shapes. This might not be the best shape. So if you find this shape isn't really working for you, well, then obviously you can just try a different shape, you know, and, uh, oops, go back to my brush and flip that. So this would create kind of a webby, weird, spidery type feeling to me if it was like some kind of like a C based animal of some kind. So there we go. I've created some shapes. I don't know. This might might just suck. Like, who knows, right? But sometimes it's fun just to try to get shake up your, your approach a little bit. So now what I can do is go back to a more conventional brush and shrink down its size and just start thinking of what shapes I'm finding in here. So if I see things, uh, there might be interesting things in here. Like, this might be an interesting thing. Like, there seems to be this crater maybe that's like maybe that's in the head let's zoom in here maybe this is actually like a head here and there's sort of this like cratery section let's step back a bit i'm gonna just try to move as quick as possible i don't want to spend too much time um fussing around because this is really uh the the earliest stages of a design right we're just trying to find something here so there's something here which might be interesting um I mean, I think the better way to go it, go go into something like this is with a, some sense of preconceived idea of like what you're going for, um, because I I right now have none, and I I don't really even know what I'm getting out of this. Like, am I looking for something humanoid, or am I looking for something completely alien? 
uh, that's that can be a big question. If you're looking for something humanoid, like I've just done some drawings on here. Maybe let's get rid of that and let's see if we can find like a humanoid shape in here. I can almost see in here. Uh, it's kind of that brush. There's almost like a bit of a nose here, and because I'm working in black, I can kind of I, I can just define the highlights on the nose. So there's there's a nose in here, a very a very strange nose, and I actually can see some lips too. There are some lips in there and a, and a chin in there, but maybe this this face, maybe that the lips don't come here. Maybe there's something on the face, something crazy up the face growing or maybe it's a part of this character there's something there but there there is kind of an eye in there as well if you can see that and that should actually be more of a black um oops, let's flip that that's like the black there and we'll grab this and this will be the top of the eyelid here the bottom like who knows i'm just i'm just trying to come up with something here and maybe this is like some kind of a strange i don't know like head thing or hat or who knows who even knows? There's something there. I don't know what it is. It's just kind of a, a jumping off point for some kind of inspiration, really. That's all it is. And uh, maybe this is like a weird, like, costumey collar of some kind. Like, it goes like this. I'm starting to see this here. There's a, it's kind of a fatter man. Oops. Let's go back to the brush here and switch those colors. So. Trying to use much, I'm just trying to use black and white, just keeping it as easy to use as possible. So he's got some sort of thing going on here. And maybe there's like this weird brain channel thing. Who knows what this is, but he's not he's humanoid, but not quite human. I mean, this could potentially actually be an eye here. Just like some almost like large, maybe it's not even an eye. Maybe it's like a, a lens of some kind. Could make it sort of like a steampunk lens on his glasses and they're connected into this thing that's attached to his face with all these like tendrils and wires connecting it so we can bring in some other shapes here there we go a little bit of strange stuff happening here who knows I don't know I'm just playing around okay so I found sort of this this guy in here. Let's uh, keep doing that. Uh, let's grab the black again. Just a couple of, like get some. I mean, this is uh, probably a little too detailed for like a thumbnail. I'm just demonstrating the. I'm trying to demonstrate here the the use of a brush to to find something a little bit more abstract, something less absolute that you can use as a jumping off point for for designs. Um, it's a little too much there. Tone that down a bit. Let me get that nose in there. So given a traditional nose, I find the nose is just I, I just I guess I just saw a nose in there and it's a it's a good anchor point to make something humanoid or humanish looking. Who I don't even know what's going on here. Like I could spend hours working this guy out, but this looks like it's sort of a shirt of some kind or something. And maybe he has this like really weird hand. It's like a ninja turtle hand of some kind with like two nails and this is a fingernail here and uh let's just shrink that brush down this there's something maybe he's holding something i don't know i'm seeing that but it's not necessarily the only thing to be seen in this shape who knows um, and this is his weird sinewy garment there and then this actually he'd be significantly larger very huge man or thing there you go and i don't know what whatever he's holding who knows doesn't quite matter maybe he's actually sitting in a giant chair and this is like a a weird almost like a pipe of some kind he has a a terrible smoking habit there we go he's got some crazy weird pipe now I'm doing more lines, uh, more line-based drawing, which isn't really always the best way to go, because it can be too a little too definitive. You know, like sometimes using large, large shapes is a better way to go. You know, if you're just defining like light and dark values in places. But for this character, I'm just reduce my opacity here, to ten. For this character, I'm just 
playing around. This is more of an exercise fun, not an exercise in any kind of absolute process. Okay, so we've got this big guy here. Let's get that black in there. Maybe put that to 30. Drop that brush size down. It's crazy weird. And now this like wire, this like thready web meshiness can be part of his his outfit, or you know maybe it's part of their culture. It's part of the ornamentation of that of that dress, of that garb. Switch that. And reduce this brush size. So he's got these like crazy cuffs, maybe that are like ornamental and, and then really elaborate. He goes. So he's got these wild cuffs around his wrists. They're like those those old Victorian time dresses. There we go. And he's got these little frills in places. Maybe even around here, he's got this frilly frilly collar. So and this frilliness um, comes from the inspiration from the actual like inkiness of the of the pattern that we found. So there's a, a design coming out of that, which would not necessarily have happened if I hadn't just been experimenting a little bit. Maybe these wires connect to his glasses. These are very cliche steampunk glasses. There we go. Let's switch this to black and get some shadow in there. So I don't want to spend too much time on this because it's really it's really just playing around and, and experimenting with with what you can do. So now that we've got sort of a, a character pulled out of there, I can go in and a little more aggressively create some lights and darks, push some things around, and start to further define this character. But this is not the character that we're actually going to be working on um, in the tutorial series. It was It's really just an example of how you can use brushes to inspire you to, to just maybe move out of your comfort zone and try different things um, to create newer styles and not necessarily fall into the tropes of typical prototypical fantasy or sci-fi characters. We see a lot, we're exposed to a lot, and if you rely too much on your technical skills sometimes, I find that those those exposures dominate and those... those uh, processes dominate your creative your creative process so when that happens you can take that that problem and actually use what your eyes looking for in abstract shapes to create more uh, creative solutions than you would necessarily come up with just just making something from scratch and following rules of of anatomy or whatever else so here's sort of a strange character and i want to just sort of wrap this tutorial up so i'm just going to just finish this hat off a little bit. Who knows? It almost has like a, a, a pipe hole of some kind in it. You could probably do this. I don't know. I don't know if I like those weird things I added there. I'm going to get rid of them. Just erase those off. I don't like them. There we go. Actually, it looks more interesting if it's, um, if it's some kind of weird thing that comes out of his head. And maybe maybe smoke comes out of it. I've got a nice little cloud brush that I've made very similar technique as as we just went through kind of just I painted a singular cloudy thing um, and if I could find it I have so many brushes right now uh, it's it's actually probably smarter to have your brushes loaded into sections you know because I've got all these like leaves and trees and all kinds of nonsense and really you know you, you could have brushes set up for landscapes brushes set up for um, more technical drawings. There's the cloudy one. So I've got this like smoky thing. So I can use this sort of smoky brush. Maybe he's got like this smoke coming out of his head. There we go. So now from a drawing like this, you could technically move into refining this. And, you know, even, even if you weren't um, and you just work for a company, the thing you've done is you've just created this really interesting abstract thing that you wouldn't have come up with normally and there's a lot of questions in here like what are these things on his head what's going on with those are they anything and you can sort of discover that later if you like the overall design you can start moving into experimenting with these shapes and adding new things to them to make them just a little bit more interesting uh, maybe we'll add some gridding grid texture onto there like who you know there's uh, anyways I think it's kind of fun so that's I, I want to kind of I want to finish up on that, and so we have this crazy guy, and who knows what he's up to. 
So after I finished the initial design of this character, I went back in and just fleshed him out a little bit and played a little a little longer with him. I spent about half an hour on him. And this is what I came up with, just really trying to move really quickly and not get too hung up in the details. And I think I think it's an interesting enough design. Obviously, you know, it came out of nowhere and just tried to move as, as quick as possible. So it's not something I would say is a finished piece by any means. But it is an example of what you can come up with in a really short period of time using really simple brushes and some basic techniques.